Hello, welcome to the video of programming the HMG10 Heavy Duty Encoder. My name is Daniel Warlaff, I'm Product Manager at Baumer Hübner. Baumer Hübner is the competence center for heavy duty motion control in the Baumer Group. We are located in Berlin and that's why you find the Hübner Berlin logo on our products. So I want to show you how to program this HMG10 Heavy Duty Encoder. The HMG10 PMG10 series provides programming of absolute signal, incremental signal and speed switch. You have to just make sure that you have an actual programmable version. In this case here, HMG10 P, the P indicates that you have a programmable version. And you can have a solid shaft, not like this one, that would be a PMG10. This one here has a hollow shaft, HMG10. You can have M23 plugs, terminal boxes, all of these versions are programmable. You also need a programming adapter. It looks like that. With this programming adapter, you create a local Wi-Fi hotspot, just like your router at home. And then you can just use any tablet, PC, laptop, or smartphone to access this Wi-Fi network. Use your standard browser to do the programming so you don't need to install any software. You need to connect the two of them via cable. So um, this I will show you uh, right now, just before I will show you the programming on the web interface. Well, you need an HMG10 encoder and you need the programmable version of it. So you can identify it with the HMG10P in this case. Uh, it can be also a PMG10P. In this case, we have an encoder with M23 plugs, and that's what you need. You need also a wireless LAN adapter programming device. It looks like that. Um, and it comes with an access code and the information you need for getting access to the device. This device has to be connected to the um, HMG10, PMG10 encoder with a cable. In this case here we have a standard programming cable, M23 for the encoder and DSUP for the programming device. I will now And you need a power supply for the programming device. It's a standard power supply and it's included in the programming device. Now I will connect the three of them. First of all, I will connect the M23 adapter to the, to the encoder. And now I take the other end, the, the D-sub inside, and connect it to the wireless LAN adapter. The last step, I will connect the power supply on the other side of the wireless LAN adapter. And connect it to a, a standard power outlet. In case you are in a different country, you can change the power outlet to different country codes. Okay, now that I have connected the encoder, the HMG10P, with the programming adapter, the wireless LAN adapter by cable, and I have powered the wireless LAN adapter, I can now show you how you can program the encoder with the web interface. I use now a standard laptop PC, but you can also do it with a tablet or a smartphone, any device that has running in a standard browser like uh, Firefox, uh, Internet Explorer. I use Chrome in this case, but it works also on other browsers. 
please uh, select the Wi-Fi network that the programming adapter is providing. It's called Bauma.sensor and depending on your device has this unique identification. You need a password for that network. You find it on the bottom of the programming adapter. In case you use a smartphone or tablet, you can also scan the QR code that is right next to the password on the uh, label of the programming adapter to get a quick access. Okay, now I'm connected with the programming adapter Wi-Fi. I can now just use my standard browser. I was in the bauma.com webpage before and enter the address of the programming adapter, the Wi-Fi adapter, uh, which is bauma.sensor. And I'm already on this programming adapter's website. In case this doesn't work, uh, sometimes search engine would try to find something in the internet here, just enter the IP address directly, which is 10.0.0.1, and you will end up at the same web page. Now I want to change here the language setting from German to English, but you can also choose any of those languages here. You can also uh, change the system from metric to imperial. I keep metric in this case. Because we have a wiring wire uh, connection already with the HMG10 encoder, I just click auto connect. And now I have a successful connection with my encoder here, which has the serial number uh, here on the top, it's an HMG10, PMG10 model. And because I want to see uh, some data right now and see if it's actually working, I can go here in the monitoring section and scroll down a bit. And I get here a very easy graph of uh, the position of the encoder. I can rotate it here now by hand. And you can see I have a value now. There's also a graph down here that shows me this value and if I do more than one rotation you can see up here that the multi-turn is also counting the number of rotations and if I have a faster application I can have also a graph for the multi-turn change here. If I want to see the speed I have a section up here with the speed. Again when I rotate here by hand I cannot rotate very fast but I can clearly see that a signal is coming um, so the encoder is working and I have also down here a signal that okay angular acceleration I wasn't rotating very smoothly so I have a high angular acceleration if you put it on the machine with a smooth run it will be certainly less um, acceleration here also you can see the inside temperature of the encoder in case of heavy duty hot applications that might be important for uh, judging the application but now we want to see the parameterization and we just choose the parameterization manual in the left corner here and look at the current parameters. So uh, because this encoder comes with incremental, speed switch and absolute, I have all the parameters here. But you can see that those parameters are currently grayed out. I can look at them, I can check them, I can have uh, information on what they are about, but I cannot change them. If I want to change them, I need to be a customer admin. Uh, that tells me, okay, change to admin and enter a password. This password is provided by the encoder. Uh, in the encoder manual, there's a sticker with this password. And that is to have a second degree of safety and security in here. So every encoder has its own password besides the password for the wireless LAN adapter. Now you can see that I have now a normal field here. I can edit this and maybe I want to make this now a higher pulse per revolution, um, 10,000 in this case, change that. And I also see, okay, speed switch setting. I can see positive, negative direction that graph explains this. And I can actually see here the values. So I have here 100 RPM, but I want here 1000 and I want to switch back RPM of 900 instead of 90 because in the other direction I had a setting uh, similarly 
but I can choose um, anything flexible here. Also, I can change the multi-turn and single-turn resolution of the SSI signal. So in case uh, the 20-bit is too much for my PLC, I change it now here to 13. And the single turn, I change to 16. And I need a binary code. I can also change that. Once I've done my changes and my settings, I have to apply these. And I get a message down here that the parameters were successfully applied. That's basically it. The parameters are now applied. Um, in order to do, uh, document that, we have here the diagnostic section. There you can download a text file that is showing all the parameters that you have. And you can use any standard text editor that shows you neatly, OK, it was this encoder of this type with the serial number. And I have changed it to 10,000 PPR. I have made these speed switch settings and these settings of the SSI absolute signal. I don't save that now, but you should rather save it. And even better, make use the stickers that we provide with the encoders to make uh, information on the encoder for your colleagues. When you are done with your settings, just disconnect from the encoder. OK, it was that simple. We have now uh, changed the encoder settings. And I just want to get back to my normal Wi-Fi. I disconnect from the encoder Wi-Fi. And I can now use again. So now we are done with setting the encoder. So thank you for listening.